Hello, this is Mark Viquez, the regional correspondent for the website Stadium Journey, the industry's leader in sports travel and reviews. Check out our new website, new and improved, and we have a map, finally. My guest today is Boris Marsh of the Rouen Huskies in France, and he's a former catcher, but now head coach, and uh in his time, he uh, he's part of a team that has won 17 championships in 19 years. So uh, that's better than the New York Yankees could ever do here in the States. So, Boris, welcome to the show. Welcome. Happy to be here. All right. Uh, so I was doing a little research on baseball uh, in different countries, trying to mix it up. Reached out to you guys and didn't know too much about the Huskies, but 17 championships in 19 years, that is damn impressive. How, how do you guys continue to have that success? What, what's your secret? I don't know. It's part of um, like a big, big um, like common work from the organization, nice. like from the from the, the, the president to the, the guy who's taking care of the field uh, to um, the guy who, who teaches our kids to... Um, to uh, the the game, the technical as aspect of the game, uh, and also, I mean, uh, there's like a, I mean, you you start winning a few championships, and there's a, the winning culture starts like getting like a, that's com starts coming and being like part of a, of our team of our club, and you know even when you're behind in in the in the score like by five ten runs, you always think you you have a chance to win, you know, so you never give up. You show up and play the best you can, knowing that that you have the ability to to win every game, even if you're behind in the in the, in the score. Okay. Now, do play do kids grow up saying I want to be a husky because they're the best team? No, not too much. Baseball is pretty pretty small in France. It's not a very a very big sport. Soccer is the biggest sport, like oh. obviously, um, and baseball is not not really, um, and. In um, in our team, like most of the players are amateurs. We don't have like many uh, professional players. We have a few like three, like two to three to four like players that we we bring from the U.S., from Venezuela, from the Dominican, from uh, like uh, other baseball countries that 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 come to help us. But beside that, all I mean, we all play because we love the game. We love the game so much that we want to make sacrifices and and show up and. Uh, and win both games and and win championship. You know, winning is the best thing that that oh, that yeah. best be, one of the best feeling in the world. You know, when you win a championship, it's like we we love it. As we yeah, I mean, it, it becomes uh, it becomes very addictive. Uh, so. Yes, it is. Yeah. So sure. you, you started with the team. Where are you originally from? I'm from Lyon. So, so Lyon is in the center of France, like East Center. And back then, um, we didn't have like a lot of baseball over there you know like we the first team i i played for we played on the soccer field you know okay. like so we had to like like put the bases on the on the soccer field because we we didn't have a baseball field you know I, the first time i saw a baseball field like a real baseball field i was like i was like 16 or 15 or 16 oh wow okay yeah we were like we, we you play on soccer field sometimes you play on a golf practice like area you know like we is like i mean you you can't did you like. Have, did you have a pitcher's catch a mound? ground ball? What's that? Did you have a pitcher's mound when you're on the. the, the no, we didn't. Ball? Like a, the, when, like the first five, six years I, I played baseball, we didn't have a pitcher pitcher mound. So, yeah, it. it I mean, it, it. And it's it has grown up a, a lot, you know, because like uh, the, the you, you see stadiums like uh, like for baseball field, like coming like um, growing and uh, new new facilities that are pretty nice. Not enough yet. But I think uh, I think we made a huge like a made a huge step uh, regarding this. But uh, yeah, it's it's really I mean it's really 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 small and and um, and the fact that like when I'm so, so I moved to Normandy so to Rouen because they had a baseball like academy. Yeah. You know, I was like sixteen, so I, uh, at the end of sixteen I moved from Lyon alone. To come to that academy in, in Rouen, and, and back then we had a, a field that that you know what uh, wasn't like the field we actually have now, you know. So uh, it was a little crappy, crappy field, and okay. but not as bad as like four or five years before 
where the players had to bring the like set up defense every game before every game because so they brought like those, those like a worker area like a plastic thing you know like a, you have like an so, so it was a portable fence you had to set up yeah but it wasn't a real fence it was like just like uh, some uh i don't know what you call that you know when you have like, people working on the streets and stuff yeah. like those, oh, no, yeah, I, like, I know exactly what you're talking about because yeah, yeah. yeah I, I can i can picture that in my head so yeah and and, and sometimes you you play on fields you, people they, they set up the backstop before the game you know because they don't have backstops you know what i mean but yeah. uh, i mean it, i mean you know in our league it's different because it's at the top league so the stadiums are i mean we, we can't call it stadiums because we don't have like a lot of stands and stuff, but it's uh, at least um, the playing field is pretty good. Yeah. Well, that that's, that's all that matters is that the playing field's pretty good. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, being out here, I'm in Indiana and, you know, we have some nice baseball fields and, you know, we may have 300 seats or, you know, no seats, but as long as that field is, is pristine and the grass yeah, is covered, so exactly. Well, but, but we, we 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 managed to do a um, um, pretty nice like uh, area around the field in Rouen. We have like a like a few stands, and uh, we also have like a um, kind of like a press box. What's that? Uh, press box. I was looking at pictures. Yeah, we, we have a press box. We have like um, a place where you can order food, you know. Uh, and awesome. but all of it, we we build this, you know. Yeah. Like we, we build this like uh, like 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 us like volunteers we build this, not the stands but the the rest we build this like. Uh, well, that that's awesome to hear. You know, it gets built organically. You know, you you, mm-hmm. you uh, develop a fan base. It becomes popular, and little by little the stadium grows. Now, exactly. exactly. How many how many people does your stadium sit? Is it about three hundred from what I found? Uh, well, yeah, a little more, maybe five hundred. But like, we when we have like a, like big like a, big games like the final, the Euro Cup final last year, we had like one thousand, maybe a little more, twelve hundred like people. But they were like standing up and around the field, and so that's maybe the most we we've had like that was last year the Euro Cup. Yeah. Well, could your team ever? build a bigger stadium maybe a 1200 2000 seater is that possible are you happy where you are right now no i th- I, I think it's one of our goals you know like um, like having a bigger stadium um but, but on the other side i mean we there's like always things we have to improve on the field also you know like our, we have like an infield turf that is actually getting old we need to change it we, we don't have lights that we, so we, we cannot play like uh, night games um, and the thing is like um, sport in France is financed like especially small sport like us we finance by by pub- public uh, public um, subvention yeah yeah so it's it's it's, it's it yeah, I get it so, so you know what I mean. So we don't have like a, 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 a like a big person like putting money or a big sponsor mm-hmm. that that can like come and say, okay, let's 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 build a stadium. I mean, they they don't have like probably I don't think they can get anything out of it out of us. So they you know, yeah. like putting yeah, too much it. tension on us. You know, so. Yeah, I get it. Because some of the smaller baseball leagues uh, that are amateur, same problems. You know, they need to replace the seats. They need to add new lights and they have to ask for donations. So they go to big businesses, other sports mm-hmm. teams. Hopefully people donate. Uh, yeah, I know exactly what you mean. That's the same same situation here in the United States uh, with the smaller teams. But mm-hmm. uh, what, uh, you know, that's, you know, it's e- it's easy to say, hey, let's build a new stadium. But you're right. You got to get the money for it. And that, that's, yeah, that's it's pretty cheap. expensive. Like, yeah, yeah they're not cheap for sure. <laughs> yeah, very expensive. But uh, but so far, what is it like to attend a game on a fan basis? Uh, what kind of food can I expect there? Are we looking at hot dogs like we have here in the United States? Or do we have something a little bit different? Do you sell alcohol there? I assume you do. Uh, oh, yeah, we, we, we sell beer. We sell beer so people can come and grab a beer. We sell like, uh, uh, we don't have hot dogs. I mean, de- depending on some days we do, but most of the time what we what we have is like the, our fans' favorite is um, the croque monsieur. I don't know if you've heard of that. Oh, no, no, I, yeah. It's I know like a ham and cheese ch- sandwich yeah. you know, that you grill. The melted yeah, cheese. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. A little, little, bit, little bit of cream. Yeah. You know, ham, cheese, and people love it. So they, they basically, they are, that's what they're getting. 
uh, but we sometimes we are like are the, the same like our volunteers they cook like a, they might someday cook something you know that they they give to uh, to the um, the fans or on summer days you have ice creams you have drinks you have a uh, pretty much everything but I think our croque monsieur is a uh, Maybe the thing that we we the, have the most. Yeah, yeah, we have uh, we have a few restaurants here that serve that. People love it here. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm definitely familiar with the uh, crawfish. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, very tasty. And I don't think any ballpark sells that out here. So uh, that that could be a nice idea to bring out here to the states. It could, it could, because it's 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 easy to eat. It's like yeah. it's, it's quick. It's easy to make as well. And it's ham, uh, it's cheese, melted cheese, ham, cheese, and bread. That's it, and butter, and that's it. I mean, you gotta have good bread. Let, let's be honest. Of course, for <laughs> yeah, we're not we're, we're not that bad in doing bread in France. So no, 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 no. When you talk about French mm -hmm. cuisine, that's some of the best in the world. And yeah, had a, had don't a, tell yeah, me that for sure. Yeah, I had a chance to visit France several oh, did years you? ago. Uh, it just went to Paris for uh -huh. with my dad, and we we went to Paris and then Amsterdam, London, Brussels. You know, we did we did the whole tour. Uh, but it's been a while. It's been a, been a long time. I uh, I would love to get back to France because you know if you if you just go to Paris, you don't really see France. You, you gotta you gotta venture out, and uh, that's what I would like to do. I'd like to go to a place like uh, Rouen or uh, Lyon, or I'd like to go to the south of France just to mm. see, see what that's all about. Just fall in love with the country. Yeah, it's yeah. Every every place is different, and there's a lot of history, different history on um yeah on all the different regions. Like around around here, it's Normandy, so you have the D Day like beaches and stuff. Uh, you have a lot of museums on World War Two. You have a lot of like history called like churches and stuff also as well. You have the American Cemetery. Yeah, also, so yeah, there are lot, really a lot of things to see around here. So it's uh, and you go you get on the south of France. It's also a lot of different things to see, and it's uh, I mean it's like everywhere, you know, like every place that it's an interest. Yeah, no, definitely Normandy. I mean, if you're American, any anybody who had yeah. any fight in World War Two, that's that's where the invasion, that's where the Americans came in and and helped uh, help help take out Nazi occupation out there. So exactly, exactly. You know, just the history, and especially if you had somebody who fought. You know, you want to go see what your your grandfather, your great grandfather. Yeah, of course. Did. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, God bless those men and women. God bless those yeah. men who did that. Uh, yeah, no, you're right. The history in France. You know, I'm a I, I'm not a, a podcaster full time. I'm a world history teacher, special okay. education. So I, you know, we're, we're we're talking about World War II right now, and you know, mm. a lot of my kids have no idea what I'm talking about or understand it, and you know, you're just, you know or just trying to explain the history of uh of you know if you go to europe you know you can find a building that's thousands of years old here in the united states i mean the oldest building might be from 400 years ago so mm. it's, uh, it's a little it's it's a little different so this is uh this is a great conversation and you know i'm glad you're able to come on here but uh I need to know more about this league you play in you know how long has it been around your team's been around since 1986 you said you played for 20 years as a catcher? Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, but baseball in France is not that um, new. Like we, we, like we have signs of games that, are, that have been played in 19, 1910, 1915. Yeah. You know, there, there has been baseball in France forever, but you never like caught up with it, like the French. The it French, never, you know. Yeah, it's, it's, are other, do other European countries, like, like if you compare France to England or Germany or Spain, where does like what other European countries where you say baseball is a lot bigger or? Uh, I would say the the, the the top two are the Netherlands. Yes, like, um, they 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 play a lot of baseball. They actually they always appear in the classic and they're competitive and they have all those like a, they have very good players in Holland and they also have very good players in Curacao, you know, in the islands in yeah, the Dutch islands. Yeah, 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 uh, and then Italy, Italy also they have the, the best. Oh. Players, okay. yeah. I, know, that, I don't think I would have guessed that. Yeah, because they, they have a lot of Italian Americans, Italian American players that that have come and helped and uh, and work with the federation, the, their federation, and the, their level is actually very good, very good, and their the structure is maybe a little in advance um, of us. And, they have, and I, I was talking about like sponsorship, and they get bigger sponsors, you know. And they have actually they have nice stadiums. They have stadiums that have like maybe three thousand, 
seats and uh, like real baseball stadiums. So we, uh, and they can like, a, it's like a pro league. The Italian league is like a pro league. Okay, so those, the guys, guys, get, those guys get can paid. make money over there. Do you have any yeah. like French players that say, hey, I want to make money. Let me go to Holland or the Netherlands. So, yeah, some did. Some did. It pays better in, in Italy than in Holland, but yeah, some 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 of some of our players played in Italy. Yeah, so, some of us did, and um, and then also you have a, like a pretty good league in Germany, in Spain also, um, and in Czech Republic. Czech Republic. Really? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, have very good baseball in there. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, and it's lately they've they've qualified for the for the classic for the the top like. Uh, Top teams in the classic and the top twelve or something, you know. In uh, yeah. the Czech Republic, yeah, I know the the World Baseball Classic. They always get players from different countries, and some of them are Americans that have maybe mm -hmm. Italian ancestry. Uh, you know, for example, my great grand if I if I was a famous baseball player, I probably could play for Italy because my great grandfather was. Mm -hmm. from Italy. But sometimes I wonder, you know, are there actual Italians that are good enough to to represent their team? Um, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. As an American, when you think of baseball, you think of the United States, Canada, Japan, Korea, uh, Mexico, Venezuela, Panama, you know, Dominican, Cuba. You know, you just don't think about Europe having having baseball and, and having pro leagues or amateur leagues, uh, but they do exist. And mm -hmm. the French league has how many teams in it right now? About 10? Um, yeah, our league, that the first division, like what we call the first division, our league has 10 teams, like all over France. Yes. And then you have like a second division, third division, and like a regional. Yeah, you have know. yeah, promotion or relegation? Yes, you do. You do. Like, yeah, the, the last the last team, like I think, go down and the yeah. top team of the second division goes up. Yeah. So that, that's that's still, a, that's only a concept with, with football slash soccer fans out here. Uh huh. There's no other league that does that. I would love to see that. <laughs> I would love to see. I, I don't know if it's a good. I don't, I'm not sure if it's a good thing though. You know, I, I'm. I mean, I. I, I think. Uh, I mean, I'm the. I'm one of the people that thinks we have too many teams in our league, okay. and that we should stay like we. Should, we should have our like regular like six maybe teams, and then like have them compete together. Okay. You know, because it, it it's it's hard to find like um, like ten competitive teams. You know, it's, the level is really like top four. And then are like uh, are much better than the the last four or five. You know what I mean? So no, oh, no, no. I I see what you mean there. So no. I mean, that, that's this yeah. interesting concept. Six teams, and then yeah. maybe you knock those four teams down. Yeah. Uh, who who I mean, are the teams that can compete with you guys? I mean, um, I, I like, it, it's um always like pretty much the same teams, like Montpellier in south of France. You know, Montpellier is a city in in south of France. Uh, close to Paris, we have like a, a couple of teams from uh, around Paris that are very good that, that we play in uh, like most of the time in the finals and the semifinals, and we compete against each other. And the games are pretty good level. We battle pretty hard, and uh, and um, that's pretty good. We have also uh, good teams on the Atlantic Atlantic Ocean, like uh, along the coast. Have, yeah, on the coast, we have like a couple of teams over over there, and that's about it. That's about it. But but I mean, we we are. It, it's so different that from where, where I started playing baseball in '95, and in '95 we don't we don't have like MLB TV, we don't have we, we YouTube, we don't have internet, so we never saw baseball oh, game. You know, I mean the the the, um, the the first baseball I like for the first five years I played was Major League, the movie Major League. I watched that like 45 times. Oh, it's the nice. only baseball I could see, you know. And then after we had like videotapes. You know of games that we like that you could get from friends in from friends so they just give you so i had like a couple of videotapes i mean i can tell you from the first inning to ninth inning every out i watched that so much you know the same videotape because i had only one videotape i watched it all the time all the time all the time and and now they can just click and watch like uh yeah like games no, no, no. whenever they want and uh so it's different, you know. No, no, you're right. You know, and I, I talk to fans, I mean I talk to my friends about watching like English Premier League or you know french soccer you know there was a time where yeah you we only could watch it if it came on tv or if there was a, a bar showing it like a soccer bar saying hey we're going to show the championship mm -hmm. of this uh of this uh european league and now we can watch it on nbc we can watch it on internet we get youtube wow. 
Yeah, you're it's, right. It's, it's, it's the same thing for us watching European soccer games because uh, mm-hmm. I'm not a fan of Major League Soccer out here. I'm more a fan of European soccer. It's played better. You know, uh, some of my students that I have, they're fans of, of uh, Paris Saint. Uh, the soccer team. Yeah, Paris Saint Germain. Yeah, yeah, Saint Germain. Uh, PSG, and it's like, wow, you know, how, how did you become a fan of this team? And it's like, we have YouTube, mm. we have Twitter, you know, you yeah. have jerseys from France. I mean, you, we have mm. soccer stores that sell their jerseys, their kits. Uh, it's a different world. You're right. 1995, mm. I think, was the first year I had internet. I had a computer. I hooked up to the internet, to the phone line. You had to wait for the dial. Mm-hmm. Now you can just get internet on your phone. So very easy. Yeah. Control. So what attracted you to baseball? You know, you're you're a young kid in France who probably should be playing another sport. How did you get into baseball? Was it just you or did you have other friends that liked the sport? Um, yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, I've, I've been attracted by, by baseball, like watching, I don't know, like maybe a, like a TV show or something. I don't remember exactly, but I had a, actually I had a neighbor. That was that played baseball that on that in a in a team you know in close to where I lived. There are, there was like a, a few teams around like where I live, and uh, and then he introduced me and I liked it. You know I played uh, a lot of tennis, and so for me like to, it, it was kind of easy compared to the others that I've never played tennis. You know like to start and uh, to hit the ball it was easier. You know like, um, and actually I did pretty good like right away. I was I was. Uh, since the beginning, I was a little better than everybody. Okay, so natural. And I loved it. I, I loved it. Uh, and, and I loved it. I loved the game. I loved the, to hit, to pitch. And um, uh, I don't know. It, it just matched. I don't know. Yeah. And I, I, I've always like done a lot of sports. And with baseball, it was different. I was like, really, I'm, I've always been a big fan of baseball. You know, the kind of kids who would like sleep with his glove, uh, you know, like... Uh, Put a bat, uh, like put a bat, like uh, put a, uh, always a bat. I was swinging the bat, always a ball in my hand. And um, I've, this, this came very easy. Did you play football growing up? Yes, I did. Yeah, I, I, I played. I played soccer. I played tennis. I, I did like judo, like some fencing, some oh, like basketball. Agree. You know, a lot of different uh, sports, yeah. like, like boxing and. Yeah, I'm but with baseball. At, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm looking at so as a player, you won 12 championships, correct? Yes. Yeah. Oh, that, that's that's more than uh, that's more than Michael Jordan out here. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty impressive. Yes. You, you had a, a 308 batting average. Your number was retired, number 13. Mm-hmm. So you're 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 yeah, you're you're a legend out there. I mean, yeah, okay. I don't know if I'm a legend, but yeah. But okay, when you walk the streets of Rouen, do people know who you are, or is it sort of like a quiet legend, quiet legacy? No, it's a quiet legend. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no. that's, that's, that's the thing. I, I, listen, if, you're on baseball. Consider, you're on baseball. I don't think reference. I'm a legend. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. It, and it's in English, and we can read about it. This, mm. Yeah, this is a lot of fun. Uh, it's good for my kids because yeah. that's cool. They just put, they just Google my name and yeah. like, oh, they show their friends like. Um, that their dad did something of his life, you know. So it's pretty. pretty oh, good. That, that, no, you watch your legacy. Now, yeah. do your kids do your kids play baseball? Or are they into this? No, I have two girls, and uh, no, they don't play t- too much sports now. Oh, okay, okay. No. Get it. Uh, I, uh, being a be playing baseball as a youth, uh, I assume you had a favorite team in the Major League Baseball. Did you have a? Yeah, yeah I mean, growing oh. up, uh, the, uh, as I told you, I mean, uh, I, I like the Indians because of the Major League movie. You know, oh, Cleveland Indians. I was like, yeah, I've just watched. I know that movie. Like, I know every, everything about that movie. So that's, but yeah, I, I I liked it. And then I, I played two years of um, community college ball in California, and okay. I went to see a lot of Giants games. So I'm, I like the Giants. Okay, so San Francisco Giants. So, yeah. So what was that experience like going to a, a Giants game at uh, I guess Pac Bell Park at the time? Wow, that's amazing! I I I think the first time I went to Pac Bell, like I, I, I cried, like I was so much so so much emotions for me, yeah, like sure. yeah, like like seeing baseball, like uh, in like finally. Like, yeah, finally in the best level that that yeah. you could ever see, and the atmosphere was awesome, like the the food, like uh, the energy. Oh and, uh, my gosh, uh, the food's ridiculous! Yeah. I, my wife and I went there several years ago. 
uh, back when they were, well, I mean, yeah, back during their World Series run, and the place was packed, uh, the food was unbelievable, you, this amazing atmosphere, it was like a big party. Uh, that's considered one of the best ballparks uh, from yeah. the major journey, uh, major league ballpark. So I'm finally getting there to see it. Yeah, that must have been a that must have been amazing because uh, that's like me. I I like Manchester City in the EPL. Mm-hmm. To go to a Manchester City game, I don't know what that would be like. I would be like, wow, sensory overload, you know. But I, I would be happy going to any kind of European soccer. I'd love to see a, a PSG game as well. That that would be a blast. Yeah, it, wow. it is really, it's really a blast. Yeah, yeah, yeah it would be incredible. So you and did... actually, like next next year, like I mean, this year in June, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know if you heard about the London series. The you heard L- of it? Oh, London series, yes. Yeah. So the the cards and the cups are playing okay. in London in Ju- in June. Yeah. Yeah. Are so you heading cool. up? Are you heading up there? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, I am. Like a. Uh, yeah. The, the the closest like we can watch uh, like a, yeah like major league baseball like a... Where, what stadium are they playing at? I'm not sure. No, I, no, I don't know. know. I, it's yeah. probably the same place the Yankees and Red Sox played. Probably yes, yes, yes. Yeah. See, I, I have friends that go to Europe all the time for things like that. I don't know where they get the money from, but <laughs> See, I grew up outside of New York City. I grew up a New York Mets fan. I grew up in the in New Jersey. Uh, so, I mean, flying to Paris and flying to uh, London from where I am, is not that bad of a price. Uh, but, you know, people flying from Chicago or Indianapolis, mm. like, where are you getting this money from to just go to, eh, go to Europe to see a, a baseball game? Mm. Uh, in fact, I had a friend, DJ. He went to Paris about a, a few weeks ago to see the Bulls game. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true, yeah. yeah. I had to hop on a plane, go see, go see the Bulls uh-huh. and go up to Amsterdam for a few weeks. And how, how was that? How was the, the basketball game? Did he tell you? Oh, uh, he, he hasn't told me yet. I think he's back. Yeah, um, yeah he, he travels a lot. He's not married, so he doesn't have any kids. And he, he makes mm-hmm. pretty good money up there in Chicago. So, you know, he just flies out of uh, the city to go to Paris from time to time. And, you know, he had this amazing hotel where you could see the Eiffel Tower. I mean, it was almost wow. like he was in a awesome, boot. Yeah. I was like, good mm-hmm. Lord, DJ. I was, I'm like, I'm out here trying to. You know, I'm a teacher out here, and I'm I'm just trying to make sure that I have enough money in my bank account. This guy's over there watching the Bulls, going up to mm-hmm. Amsterdam. He was in Korea watching baseball last year. So, yeah, you know, when you don't get married and have kids, you know, I guess you can do those things. So, you know, <laughs> I, I get it. My my dad did the same thing. He loved my dad. He's 93 years old. Wants to get back to Paris one more time before he dies. He's like, I just want to get back to Paris. I just want to just go there before I die. He's one of his favorite cities uh, in the world, uh, you know. But yeah, check checking out the London series, Cards and Cubs. That'd be a lot of fun because those those are rivals. Mm-hmm. If you're a Cardinals fan, you don't like the Cubs, and vice versa. Of uh, course, yeah. It'd be nice if they came to Paris to play. I'm sure they can build a ballpark somewhere. I would love that. Yeah, we yeah. have enough, we have like, we, we have like soccer park, like soccer soccer stadium that could like uh, yeah. be big enough to. Uh... Yeah, they can make it. To have game, and, and I'm sure yeah. you've got enough interest in in, uh, in in the Parisians and the surrounding areas to come out and for watch. For sure, and people people would travel from all over Europe oh, no. to see this. For sure, yeah. Yeah, it's like oh, we're going to see baseball in Paris. Yeah. Uh, come on, yeah, that's that's mm-hmm. an ideal city. Uh, how far are you from Paris? How far is Rouen from? It's an hour, an hour and thirty minute drive. Okay. Yeah. And then, what can you tell me about your city? It's about one hundred ten thousand people. Like, if I wanted to visit, how, how many days should I have? Is, is it is it worth visiting for a week? Is there a lot to see? Um, like if you stay in the region, like in Normandy, okay. you you can, you can be based in Rouen, and there's like a lot of things to see, like a lot of historical things to see. But I mean, two, two to three days, you've you've seen you've seen it all. Okay. But then you can, um, yeah, from there, you can go everywhere in Normandy, you know, you can drive, you have an, an hour drive and you, you're in the, in the beaches, you know, so it's like, a, it's a pretty close for everything and it's a good place to, because it's not crowded as like, uh, it's not like Paris. Oh, yeah. You know? yeah. And you can, and, and train, train is pretty big here and in one hour train, train ride, you're in Paris. 
So that's okay. pretty easy. I can't argue with that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's one thing here in the States. We we don't like trains. I don't know why. I know. Yeah, here it's, it's so big, you know, like we, we have those fast trains yeah, that, that goes pretty fast. And it's, I mean, uh, like, because in Rouen, a lot of people are living in Rouen and working in Paris. Okay. Know? And if you, if you, if you, if you would drive every day from Rouen to Paris with the traffic, you will spend like four to five hours in your car, you know, with yeah. the train, you can, you can rest, work, sleep, yeah. you know, and yeah. it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. That, that, that's like growing up in New Jersey. People live, people could commute to New York city. Uh, it would cost you, you know, you have to pay to cross the bridge into the city. Then you got to pay another fee to mm. leave. I think it's like 12 American dollars to go it's like 24 dollars to pay uh plus you know traffic yeah you could be you could be commuting for two hours so there's trains that take you up there uh but yeah that that's a beautiful thing about europe people take trains mass transportation is superior once you get to paris you have the metro uh makes a lot of sense here where i live in indiana you know you have to have a car you know i live in this, yeah, pretty much everywhere in the states, besides like New York and San Francisco, maybe or like little Chicago, bit of Washington. I mean, there's a few cities. Uh, yeah. Even Portland, Oregon, you can get around without having a car. Surprisingly, uh -huh. Uh -huh. surprisingly, they have a really good uh, light rail system. Los Angeles, you need a car. El you know, people talk about yeah. the traffic. I remember going to Paris and looking at that traffic around the the arch, and I was like, "Holy moly!" I would not want. Oh to yeah. Go yeah <laughs> you just don't stop you just go you start and you never stop no you never like, stop it, 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 like, because like like cars if, if you stop then you will, will stop for five minutes because nobody will leave will, will let you start again you know what i mean yeah and and then yeah. being in amsterdam you know everybody had a bicycle yeah. <laughs> yeah and i think my dad he rented a car for some reason he rented a car and i think after a couple of days he's like i'm done we're taking it back we're just going to take mass transportation. Yeah. And, and he knew better. I, I, I didn't know better. I was a young kid, but, you know, no, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. So uh, when does the season start for you guys? And uh, what's going on in the off season? What, what's, what are you doing to prepare as a coach now? Um, uh, our season starts in March 18th. Okay. And um, we've been like practicing. I mean, guys pretty, pretty much practice on their own until like maybe – like mid January, and then we start team practices like in February, you know, and it's a big, um, big investment because the season goes from, from March 18th, like as every baseball season, like uh, I mean, but to uh, to September until September, uh, but guys have families and they work on the sides, and uh, they make a lot of sacrifices because every weekend they're away, every weekend they're on the field. And some of us have kids. Some of us have yeah. like a job that, that are, takes a lot of times. Um, I, I'm a physiotherapist myself, myself on the side. Oh, okay. So it's pretty much it's a lot of work as well. But we're trying to manage everything, and guys make make a lot of sacrifices. And our and we're like starting team practices like on Sunday mornings, and we practice usually on like team practices are on Tuesdays and Thursdays and Saturdays and Sundays. But some some of our players they practice every day because we we have like a batting cages and stuff so they come and they just hit every day because we have a big like um we we I mean we always have like a lot of high goals you know when we we last year we won like everything we won like the league we won the Euro Cup we won the um, like a tournament like with all like, the the league teams you know only. Um, they meet during the week and the, the winner gets a spot in the Euro Cup the next year. And we won that uh, also. And um, this year we qualified for the top European Cup. So the top is like eight European teams with the Dutch, the Italians, the Germans, the Spanish. You know, you have like a, a lot of like good imports, good import players, like some sometimes some ex big leaguers and stuff. So it's a big goal for us this year. It's a big, yeah. really a big goal. And we, we, we I mean, we're never satisfied by because we won. We still we want to keep winning and yeah. winning and winning and winning. So I don't blame you. I don't blame mm -hmm. you. And uh, do you have any players from the states on your team right now? Um, no, no. We are we're gonna have like four Venezuelans, like okay. uh, players, um, and a Canadian player okay. as well. You know, 
And uh, last year we had an Australian pitcher. Okay. Uh, and pitched in like double A ball. Okay. And, yeah. Like our imports are like the, are from like single A to triple A sometimes, but we try to get like a okay, yeah, as good of of imports as we can because like we, uh, the, I mean, we want them to be better than our French players, which are pretty good, pretty good. Some of us, uh, some of our players, like they played indie ball, you know, in the in the states, and one uh, we have the first like French draft pick. Uh, with uh, who played for us, like a guy that we was drafted by the Dodgers, like back in two thousand eight or nine. So, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not too. For, uh, any French-born players that have ever played in the major leagues? No, not yeah. yet. Not, not yet. yet. Oh, yeah, no, no, I, I, the, 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 I think the highest was like a, uh, went up to double A. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I know uh, Bruce Bochy is a manager. He was born in France. I don't know if he is considered yeah. some people born in France, but yet do they? Oh, Charlie Lee was born in France, former Montreal yeah. pitcher. Dante Bichette was born in France. Oh, really? Okay, well, yeah, I think so. It sounds like that would be that sounds like a French and, thing. Dante. And Bruce Bruce Bochy coached our national team. Yeah, like for the World Baseball Classic qualifier this year. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, th those are some familiar names. Okay. You, you mm -hmm. guys. Got some, yeah, yeah. He was born in uh, Landes du Bussol. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm. I'm gonna butcher the French language. I. I'm sorry. They just. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> my dad, actually, my father. He's from Costa Rica. He. Uh, he grew up speaking Spanish. Taught himself French and. When he goes to when we would go to Montreal, that's all he would speak to everybody. And then, of course, when we went to France. So uh, he would tell people he was born in Paris because everybody thought he spoke French pretty well. <laughs> it's like, Dad, stop lying to people. You're not from you didn't live in France. Oh, I've been there 25 times. That counts. I said, no, it doesn't count. So, <laughs> so, 25 yeah. times. 25 times. He used to work for the airline. So. Oh, it, was, okay. it was easy for him to get like a twenty dollar ticket to go to Paris for the weekend and, and just yeah. yeah 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 he was, cool. he was a he was he was a big fan he he was he was definitely excited to take me there uh mm. when I just graduated high school well no I was I was still in college uh it was like halfway between college and graduation so yeah a beautiful country beautiful city and you know you know Rouen would would be a very nice destination to check mm -hmm. out a baseball game and then you know see a little history and. Just, just spend time because I'm looking at your stadium and I see the uh, outfield. You got the village back there, and it just it's just such an iconic little. little yeah, stadium. yeah. I, I think the, the the biggest like like uh, the best thing about our stadium is downtown. It's yep. Town, you have like you have like you are you, you have it's a ten minute wall, like and you are in this really in the center of the city, and it's all like you have trees around. It's uh, you have like a nice view and it's it's really really nice nice place. It's really really, really, it, really it's nice a place. nice setting. It's it's sort of like if you're an American, you're looking at that photo and you're like, okay, that looks like Europe. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so beautiful. All right, well, Boris, I appreciate you coming on here, taking your time, and uh, talking a little baseball with me. Uh, where can we find you guys on Twitter if we want to check out more about your team or follow you or, or go to your website? Where's the best place to do it? Uh, um, I mean, we're on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter. You write like who want us keys and you can find you find us. All right. Okay. Rouen Huskies and Huskies. Yeah. Before we go, how, how did you come up with the name Huskies? What's the the history behind that name? Oh, I have no, I have no idea. It's like I think that the persons that, that founded the club i don't know if they found that name and i yeah. I, I don't i don't know everything then ever, everything that's behind all that so. okay just because i think the, the official name is uh ruan 76 76 is um the area the okay. area like a code kind of you know oh so, that's yeah. okay. good to know good yeah. to know all right well boris thank you once again for coming on uh, best of luck this year. Let's uh, look for what number 18, 18th champion. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. Yeah. So we'll be following you guys. And uh, thank, thank you, you. Mark. All right. Good night. And yeah, there. you too. Take care.
All right, that was Boris Marsh from the Rouen Huskies of the Division One French Major League Baseball team. Wow, that was that's fun. Uh, it, it's very easy for me to talk to a summer collegiate team or a minor league team or even a major league team here in the United States or Canada. Uh, when you talk to these other uh, clubs based outside, like in New Zealand or France, uh, you you really get a different vibe. I mean, he was talking about playing baseball because he had a love for the movie Major League, and he became a Cleveland Indians fan, now the Guardians. And then he's talking about playing on fields that were designed for soccer. They didn't have a pitcher's mound. They had to put up their own fence. Uh, yeah, you really could tell that this guy loved the game and was going to play it. Had a great career. I mean, his numbers retired, 11 championships. I mean, this is a legendary Hall of Fame pitcher. I mean, I'm sorry, catcher uh, for uh, the French League. And, you know, he, he says that he could walk around the streets and not get noticed. <laughs> so 11 championships or no, 12 championships. That's that's and, and listen, any league you win 12 championships in, that's impressive. I don't care if it's uh, the major leagues or or the the low the low minor leagues. So, uh, wow, fun, fun. And I, I thought that was a great conversation. Um, I don't speak French, so thank you for uh, the French and the British and the Germans and the Spaniards and Portuguese for speaking multiple languages. Makes life easier for us. <laughs> so awesome, awesome. Hey, that was a great interview, and I appreciate you for listening. Uh, we know you have your choice of uh, podcasts to listen to, podcast episodes. So I hope I'm giving you some good content, one that makes you think, one that really keeps you focused. And, you know, just just keep listening. I would not be here without you guys, uh, especially guys like Zach Beeson, who listen to my podcast and tweet about it. Paul Caputo gives me some love. Anna gives me some love. Ed... Um, Mike Sellers, thank you for having me on your podcast. Uh, you've done a nice job as well promoting me. And if I haven't, if I forgot you, just tell me. Tell me. Say, Mark, you forgot to tell me. I'll get you next episode because next episode is going to be with Eric Franson. He is a mem he is part of the ownership of the Pineville Porcupines, the Pineville Porcupines of the Old North State League. That'll be my next guest. And then a week after that's going to be uh, Gem City Bison, a little Gem City Bison baseball. So don't know who's going to come on three weeks from now, but I got you hooked up for the next two. So guys, follow me, Ballpark Hunter, on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, even though I don't really do a lot of TikTok videos. Maybe I should. Maybe I should. All those kids in high school are doing TikTok videos, challenges and whatnot. Apparently you can find a way to steal a car now. Like seriously, guys, like that's what we're doing TikTok for. I won't be doing that. Maybe sneak into a ballpark. <laughs> Just kidding. Even though I've done that before. Uh, and you can also follow me on uh, YouTube. Ballpark Hunter on YouTube. I have videos galore. So please check out my videos. Like, comment, share with your friends. Watch them instead of primetime TV. It's probably better viewing. A little wholesome. Uh, but until next time, my friends. Take care. Play ball. Thank you.